here. Okay. So um, thank you all for jumping on the call tonight. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself as Corey Mayo. I am the CEO and founder of Team Living Healthy and Fit. Um, first, I wanted to start off um, because you guys have totally been rocking these last two weeks, and I am just blown away by the progress and the dedication and consistency that you all are showing. Um, you guys are pushing the limits and building your business and just really going all out. So I'm super proud of all of you for that. And, um, it's really exciting to see you guys grow and, you know, I'm getting text messages and messages on Facebook about how you're growing your business. And it's just really, really cool for me to see you guys grow and for, um, you know, for me to see you reach your goals. Um, so that's really cool. And I'm really, really proud of all of you for that. Um, we have quite a few new members to our team, so I would like to take a moment to um, introduce all of them or welcome them to our team. Um, we have Eliza Shoup, Tracy Bowman, Nicole Lohman, Chad Aukerman, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, Chad, Jody Joyce, Fawn Briggs, and Cody Kuman. So welcome to the family, guys. We're really excited to have you as a part of our team. Um, I would also like to um, show some recognition for the following coaches who have already reached Success Club or are um, on the board and are earning points towards reaching Success Club for the month of March. Becky Graham um, at Success Club 9, Josh Earl at Success Club 6, Emily Shea, Success Club 4, Cody Kuman, Success Club 2, Michelle Overly, Success Club 2. Paul Mayo, Success Club 2, Erica Petrowski, Success Club 2, and Emily Earl at Success Club 1. So awesome job, you guys. I'm super, super proud of you. You are doing an awesome, awesome job. Your hard work, dedication, and consistency um, are really showing, and you're really helping a lot of people. If you didn't hear your name, that's okay. Um, we still have two weeks left in the month, and um, people have hit Success Club 5 in two short days. So um, don't let that stop you from you know, continuing to invite, um, sharing with people, making posts on Facebook. Make sure you're doing your personal development and building those relationships with people because it can happen in just a couple days, and we still have two weeks left in the month. Um, so um, let's work towards that and get on the board and start reaching some of our goals. On tonight's call, um, I would like to share um, with you the opportunity and the importance of growing your team. This is something that when I first started, I did not get the concept. Um, I didn't understand that building my team was more important than taking the commission on um, just a regular sale on a customer. Um, when I first started, um, most of you know, Kelly was um, just starting out as well. Um, and she was helping me guide, you know, guide me through um, things, but she was learning herself. And I wasn't proactive enough to teach myself or to um, venture out and find the resources that I needed to um, make this happen. Because Kelly went out and did it. Like she didn't have an upline that was there guiding her and gave her all the tools and gave her all the systems. She's worked her butt off for, for, for her team and for us um, to make these duplicatable systems um, so that we can have success a lot faster, which is really cool. So I just want to really um, show you the opportunity and the importance and where you can be in a year two years, three years from now, if you concentrate on building your team now, um, I can only imagine how much further I would be in my business had I seen this. I didn't realize the opportunity and the growth that needed to happen until about a year into the business. So um, it's really, really important and it's going to make a huge difference in your business if you can... Um, see the opportunity and um, take a step outside of your comfort zone and embark on that opportunity. So I'm going, this is the first time I'm doing this, but we're gonna screen share, hopefully. Hold on a second. 
We're going to screen share a PowerPoint that I made. I just got to figure out how to do it. So just bear with me. <laughs> okay. Can you guys see that? Can you see my screen? Yes? No? I know everybody's on mute. Can somebody tell me if you can see it? Let's see. Shannon, can you see that? Can you shake your head yes or no? Okay, you can? Okay. So I'm going to move this over to the side. Okay. So growing your team. Who do you want to work with in this business? So um, there's a lot of factors um, going into building your team. And a few things that you are going to want to think about are the following. Um, think about who you're compatible with. Think about the people that are your friends and the, the people that you enjoy to be around. Um, as much as we would like to help everyone and you know share this opportunity with everyone um, because there's a lot of people that we can help you guys I mean there's people out there that financially need help or they need help with their health and fitness um, they need help with their nutrition I mean there's just a huge array of people that really need our help um, but we're not gonna relate to every single person we're not gonna be relatable to every person so we have to keep in mind that it's not only a fit for us building our team, but it has to be a fit for that person as well. So thinking about who we're compatible with. Um, something that will help with this part of it is identifying your target market. Um, and your target market is defined as the people that are most like you. So typically, um, your target market is going to be who you are. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? So for me, my target market is going to be a busy mom who, um, you know, initially it was a busy mom who was struggling to find the balance with a new baby. Well, now it's um, a busy mom of two who's on the go and, um, you know, struggles to find the balance and um, ways that we can incorporate um, healthy, easy meals for not only myself because it's you know, something I want to work towards, but also people, you know, for their family to incorporate that into their entire family. So identifying who you are is really going to help you to um, build your voice and um, to help you be relatable to the people that are most like you, that are going to be compatible with you. Um, so something that will help with this is creating a list of the characteristics you want in your coaches. Um, a list of characteristics, not only that are, that you like in yourself, um, but that you like in other people as well and kind of comparing the two and coming up with, you know, who is the ideal coach for you? What do you want that person to, um, demonstrate? What do, what kind of characteristics do you want that person to have? Um, who would you like to work with? So the beauty of this business is we get to choose who we work with guys. We don't, you know, if somebody comes to us about the coaching opportunity and they approach us, we don't necessarily have to sign them on our team. You know, you get to choose, you are creating this team. And if somebody is not a good fit for your team or for you, and you don't feel that they're compatible, then, you know, don't be afraid to voice that. Um, I will never forget when I went to coach Toberfest back in October. Um, oh, I just heard a name just slipped my mind. It'll come to me. Um, she's a, 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 um, a several star diamond coach. Um, and she's very into blogging and she will sign two coaches per month and that's it. She will only give her time to two new coaches a month. And she is extremely I mean, extremely picky um, about who she will sign on to her team. So obviously she's at a little bit um, higher stage in the game at this point. Um, she's, you know, over a six figure income earner and um, she's built a, a very big team, but she was still picky in the beginning as well. So, you know, if somebody's not a good fit, don't, don't feel bad about, you know, moving on and, and, you know, searching out the people that you really want to work with. Um, so that kind of also covers the quality versus quantity. 
um, you know, obviously we want to build our team and we want to have numbers on our side. Um, because the more numbers we have on our side, quite frankly, the more people we can help because obviously a team of 10 people can go out and touch and help more people than just a team of one or two people. Um, but the quality, you know, going back to those characteristics, what do you want in your coaches? Um, you know, do they have those characteristics? Are they um, representing what your big vision is? And that's how you can decide. So continued um, who you'd like to work with. Um, you know, reaching out to the people who bring out a fire inside you, somebody that inspires you, somebody that you look at and you are just, you know, you have this inspiring drive or you really admire something about them and their personality. Maybe they're really good with people. Um, maybe they're very loyal and honest. I mean, whatever it is that works for you, those are the people that you want on your team and that you are going to want to work with. Um, so I would like for you guys to unmute yourself for a minute here, and I'm going to bring this back over. And um, I'm going to stop this for just a second. I would like for you guys to tell me what are some of the characteristics that you want in your coaches? What are some of the characteristics that you look for that you think make a successful coach? Shannon, anybody? <laughs> Becky, nobody? I mean, do you want that? You want them to be hardworking. You want them to be consistent. You know, what are the things that you guys look for? The determination and willingness to mm. motivation to do hard work and trud through the mud if they have to to get you know to reach goals and and the want to and the will to do you know whatever possible to make you know their weekly or daily goals instead of going, eh, well, I did it, you know, whatever. So it's basically somebody's a go-getter, mo highly motivated, very determined. Yeah. Letting type of person. Yeah. I mean, I mean, those are all good characteristics. You want somebody that's going to be willing to put in the time because, you know, this isn't something that happens overnight, but you know, it's something that in three to four years, you could be in such a wonderful financial state that you, one, can retire from your full-time job that, you know, you're probably making, just making the bills. I mean, nobody wants to live like that. Who wouldn't want financial freedom and um, freedom of their own time and say when and where? So who are the people that are going to get you and get themselves to that point? Those are the characteristics that you want to look for. You know, you want somebody that's hardworking, somebody that signs on the calls like you guys are right now, somebody that's going to put the time and effort in. You want somebody that's willing to do personal development, somebody that's teachable and willing to learn and isn't, you know, kind of stuck in our, uh, one straight and narrow, if you will. So, I mean, does anybody else have any other characteristics that they feel are are good that they that they look for in a coach or look for in somebody that they're reaching out to somebody that's positive or ambitious yes definitely yeah, somebody negative and yeah okay i'm gonna go back to my screen share so you know create that list guys because that's gonna really help um for you to kind of identify with somebody a little bit more. Okay, so let's see if we go back to this here. Okay. I'm just gonna move this over here. Okay, so um, making the list of, um, you know, the characteristics that you're looking for. Um, and are you reaching out to people who are ready to go places? So kind of um, like Becky was saying, you know, reaching out to the go-getters, the people that are, you know, see the value in this because this opportunity is huge, you guys. Like there are not very many opportunities that people are presented with where they're surrounded by positive people who are pushing um, not only for their own goals, but helping to inspire people to push for their goals and to push forward and, and fulfill their dreams and fulfill everything that they've ever wanted. 
and be able to do it, um, you know, in a fairly reasonable amount of time to build a successful business. So, um, you know, reaching out to those people who are ready to shoot for the stars and, you know, really put their all in as to who you want to be on your team. Basically, you want to, you know, identify the target market and create your list and you want to replicate yourself. You want people on your team who are like you, who see the vision and the belief and the value and the opportunity. Okay, so this is a little video here and it's kind of loud. I'm not gonna, uh, so if you need to turn your volume down a little bit. Um, this is Caleb Thomas. He is a phenomenal coach. He's pretty entertaining when it comes to his videos and trainings. So this is just a short four minute video, but I, I, I thought it was wonderful and definitely gets across the whole point of um, the fear and getting over the fear of coaching. So we're going to click on this and it should take us right to his YouTube channel. Can you guys not see that? Nope. Oh. Sorry. like 
like, subscribe, comment, share, all those buttons. Okay, could you at least hear that? Could you guys at least hear that? No? Not, no, not very well. Oh. Well, I'll post the video. I'm sorry. I wish I, I, sorry. I will um, post that video up, but I have in the PowerPoint going over, let's see here. I apologize, it's my first time doing it like that, so we'll learn. Okay, let me get this back up. <clears throat> Okay. Dang it, guys. Bear with me. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. So, Caleb Thomas. Let's see. We want to from current slide. Okay. There it goes. Okay. Or we're just going to go through. Goodness. Okay, so basically um, the video, I will share that in our group because it's really pretty funny and it's just, it lightens the mood on um, how we're all so terrified to um, take that step out of the box and, um, you know, share with people the coaching opportunity. So getting over the fear, um, part of helping you to get over the fear is remembering your purpose. Remembering the reason that you started this, your why. Do you want to do this to help people? Um, you know, or are you wanting to help people and also help yourself financially? Um, but it, it's remembering your purpose. If somebody says no, it's just a word. Um, Caleb Thomas in the video shares, you know, um, no just simply means no, not right now. Um, there's a few of you on the call right now who told me no originally, and that's okay. No just means it's not their time, and that's okay. It's We have to remember when we started this journey, you guys, that we, most of us, weren't ready to jump on board like, oh, okay, she asked me to be a coach. Here I am. I'm a coach now. Um, it just doesn't work that way. So um, don't be afraid of the word no. The more no's you get, the more yeses you're going to get. So... Um, which leads me to practice equals progress. So the more you talk to people, the more you're going to find your voice, the more comfortable you're going to be with um, talking with people about the coaching opportunity. And the better you're going to handle objections and when people do say no. Um, but the thing is, is if you never ask, it's always going to be no. But if you do ask, there's a 50-50 chance that they're going to say yes or no. So don't let the fear of no um, stop you from sharing the opportunity with people. Okay, so people to think about um, who we want to invite. Um, number one, your first person should be your spouse or your significant other. I will show you in um, a couple more slides why that is important. But um, getting, the, getting your spouse or your significant other on board um, as soon as possible is going to be the best for you. Um, challengers, people who um, are you know, go-getters in the group, they're already set up with either Shakeology or a challenge pack, they're engaging in the group daily, they're just really, really go-getters in the group and they're getting awesome results with the product because they're already being a product of the product. Um, so why not share the opportunity with those people? Following up, keeping a list of the people that you um, reach out to about coaching. Um, one of our Diamond coaches on Team Toby to Tone, Kelly Christine, um, actually just posted um, that this girl that she reached out to, um, she didn't share how long ago, but somebody that she had approached about the coaching opportunity, um, you know, previously, she had said no to Kelly and Kelly let it go and never followed up with her and actually just recently followed up with the girl 
And the girl signed up to be a coach with somebody else. And Kelly was like, man, you know, I was afraid to like follow up with her because I didn't want to like feel like I was bothering her or like it was, you know, like I was being annoying or I was being an inconvenience to her. And she's like, but she just wasn't ready at the time that I had asked. So she kind of missed out on a coach. Mm -hmm. Um, So always follow up with those people. And something that um, will help is on your contact list. Also keep a contact list of people that you've reached out about coaching so that that way you can go back and follow up with those people. Excuse me. Um, Okay. And the people that inspire you, who do you want to work with? So um, something that Janelle Summers taught at the last Super Saturday was to go through your contact list, find the people who you find inspiring and who you want to work with. Not necessarily somebody that needs Beachbody, not necessarily somebody that is already into health and fitness, just people by going off of their personality and their characteristics. Highlight those, highlight or circle or star, whatever you got to do, the people on your contact list who you feel would be a great um, attribution to your team. Um, Janelle Summers also shared um, somebody, it kind of goes off of that, is just somebody that you want to work with. There was a girl that came to her turbo, turbo kit class, and she always stood in the back, and she was a heavier set lady who had some work to do. But she showed up every week, week after week, and continued to work her butt off. And you know, Janelle's like, you know, she modified and, you know, she had to take her time and sometimes she had to take breaks, but you know what? She showed up every single week and each week that woman was bringing somebody new with her, was getting somebody else engaged with her. So it doesn't have to be somebody that's already into fitness. It just has to be somebody that has a personality that can connect with people and who can reach out to people and who isn't afraid to talk to people or, You know, I mean, they don't have to have all these characteristics because there are certain things that we can learn, but the point is, is it can be anybody. It's just picking out those people who you find inspiring and who you want to personally work with. Um, Also, people that, um, that we can sign on or invite would be people who are continued customers. So Um, sharing the discount opportunity with those people um, and helping them save. Even it's, even if it's 15 to $20 a month, you guys, you know, 15 to $20 a month is a tank of gas for some people. So it, it makes a difference. And just the fact that you share that with them, you know, kind of gives you credibility because those people understand that you're looking out for them. Okay. So how do I invite Um, This is in our files tab of the Team Living Healthy and Fit, but I just want to go over this again um, because um, it's really important to um, really get this part of the inviting process down. So what you're going to do is you're going to edify the person. Um, You're going to share the characteristics that you feel inspire you or that would inspire others. We're not going to message this person and say, oh, so I think in the group you're doing blah, 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 blah. So I think you should be a coach. No. What you're going to do is you're going to be like, hey, girl, you know, like I saw you're, you're posting a lot in the group and you're really inspiring the others and engaging with them. And I saw a couple of the girls really look for your posts every day and you're doing an incredible job. Um, I love to see all your posts and, and how motivated you are and the results that you're getting. Um, you know, you're really doing a great job. And then you can either from there, let them respond back. Or after that, you can do, you know, after the initial, um, you know, the initial edify or, you know, building them up, you can say, you know, I don't know if this is for you or not, but have you ever considered doing what I do as a health and fitness coach? Have you ever considered not, do you want to be a coach or, you know, would you like to be a coach? Have you ever considered? Because you're just simply asking them if they've considered it. You're not asking them to enroll today. It just kind of gives a little bit of a buffer. So if they say, no, I haven't, but I would be interested in learning more. Okay. So you simply say, 
Um, great. I would love to talk with you further. This is if you're on the phone with somebody. Okay. So simply, I would, I would love to talk with you further, but I tend to ramble on and on because I'm so passionate about what I do. If I were to send you a 30 minute video about what I do, would you watch it? Okay. So that's if you're on the phone. If the person says yes, and you're like messaging back and forth on Facebook, just simply say something like, great, you know, I just, I really find you inspiring. And, you know, again, give them a little bit about how you, the characteristics that you like in them. And then um, ask them, if I were to share a short 30 minute video with you, would you watch it? And then they can either say yes or no. But here's the, here's the kicker. Use the third party tool. And the third party tool that I use is in our files tab and it is Kelly's, um, what is coaching? It's one of her, what is coaching calls? It's like 35 minutes long and she goes over, you know, what coaching is. She goes over the successes of coaching, you know, who is a coach, who can be a coach, um, the objections of being a coach, all that. So it's all rolled into one call. If you try to be the message you're going to blow it. I don't care who you are. If you, Kelly will tell you the same thing. She would, you just, you ramble, you tell them too much. You give them too much information and then they go into sensory overload and they're like, wait, what? You want me to do what? Let the third party tool be the message and then set up a follow-up call. So I always set up a follow-up call before sharing the video. That's really important because it, you don't want to just send the video to anybody. You, it's almost kind of like an interview process. If that person's not willing to get on the phone with you, they're not going to get on the phone with you even if they sign up as a coach. So if they're not willing to get on the phone with you, don't share the video, okay? Um, I try to make it the, like I'll say, so when, you know, when do you think that you would have time um, to watch the 30 minute video and set up a short call afterwards to chat. So that way I know, like if I'm talking to this person on a Monday and they're not going to have time to watch it until Thursday, I'm certainly not going to send them the video on Monday and then do a follow up call on Thursday. Because, you know, think about when you started this, there's self doubt and, you know, reservations and some fear that come along with jumping into something like this. If you give them four days to think about it, they aren't going to answer the phone unless they're a really good friend. So um, try to make that follow-up call. You know, if let's say it's Thursday again that you can talk, you know, I might send it to them Wednesday night or first thing Thursday morning, depending on when they told me they are going to have the availability to watch it. So that's something to kind of think about too. Um, using the closing questions. These are also located in our file tab. Um, but these will help you to get an idea of where this person stands with the business, what kind of effort they're going to give. This again is kind of like an interview process. You get an idea of what they're looking at, what they're excited about, how much effort they're going to put into this because if they're just kind of ho hum about it, but they, they want to sign on, but they're just kind of like, you know, like, eh, whatever you might not want to sign. You might want to just tell them, well, you know, I really greatly appreciate your time, but I just don't think that this is a good fit for us right now. So um, following through the questions, um, and I'll read through them um, for you guys. So it's, um, hey, so-and-so, so what did you like best about the video? And then they tell you, and then um, I like to use feel, it should be feel, felt, found, sorry, um, or, or feel, thought. It, it, they both work, but... Um, that's really awesome. I actually felt the same way when I watched this video or I felt the same way when I first got, first got started. Um, here is what I have found. So you can, you make it relatable by, um, you know, kind of sharing a little bit about you and how you felt when you were starting the process. And then it goes on a scale of one to 10, 10 being ready to sign up right now. Where do you see yourself? So typically they will say, you know, like a six or a seven. Very rarely will you get a 10. I've gotten a 10 one time and that person never signed up. So um, be leery if they say 10. I'm just kidding. But um, it's so usually a six or a seven. Um, if they say a one, then, you know, you say, you know, why, um, you know, what would you need to hear to have that number come up or something like that? And if they still are kind of, 
you know, just not willing to talk with you about it, then just thank them for their time. Um, but so usually a six or a seven, um, if you were able to get started with us on a part-time basis, how much would you need to earn for it to be worth your time? So sometimes people will give you a really astronomical number and most people will give you like 300 to $500 range, um, which, you know, that's, that's very doable just starting out. Approximately how many hours per week would you commit to developing that kind of income? Um, so again, they'll give you a number. And then number five, you're going to plug those numbers in. So you're going to say, great, how many months would you be willing to commit, you know, five to 10 hours a week to developing three to $500 per month? And they'll say, you know, whatever they're, you know, we'll say six months. Okay, so, um, so if I could show you how to earn three to $500 working seven to 10 hours over the course of the next six months, would you be ready to get started right now? Now. Um, some, the video that I shared in, um, team living healthy and fit the other day was Marissa Myers. And basically she was doing all of this. Um, sorry, did that do you, can you guys still see that? Okay. Um, so Marissa Myers, um, shared this, like, um, basically a mock of her and a coach doing this back and forth. And, at the end, she sends a link. I personally do it with them on the phone right then and there to ensure that they're signing up. Um, you can do the link. I personally have never had success with that. And I know that Kelly does not send a link either because she has not had success with that. So if they're ready to get started right now, um, you know, do it with them on the phone. If they need, let's say they need to wait to payday or whatever, set up a follow-up call to do it with them over the phone. Okay. Okay, so this is what building your team looks like. Here we have a coach, then an active coach, an active emerald, which you have a coach on your left and on your right, an active ruby. You personally have sponsored one emerald on each side with two active coaches underneath that. And then to be an active diamond, you need to have a minimum of one emerald on each leg and then three additional active coaches on each leg. So this is where I wanted to share with you um, the benefits of signing on your spouse immediately or very, very quickly. So can you guys see my cursor like moving? Yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to use the diamond, for example. Let's say, okay, so I have PJ here. He's my first coach to my right, okay? If I had not signed him up until down here, we'll say a couple months later or whatever, and we sign him up all the way down here, which has three coaches above him, and what, however many coaches they have under him, he is losing out on all of this team volume that's here because I have him immediately after me. He gets to benefit from all the coaches, not only that go underneath himself, but also all the coaches that go that I sign on the team and that you guys sign on the team and so on and so forth. So he gets to benefit from all the team volume underneath us. So that is why you know, I feel that it's very, very important because you get to benefit twice from the volume because your spouse is taking advantage of it and getting more cycles out of the team that you're building and you get to um, take advantage of the team cycle bonuses as well. So um, getting them on board as soon as possible um, is definitely very beneficial for residual income. Also, um, you know, it gives you control over um, a business center. You know, if you are getting ready or you're getting close to a rank advancement, it gives you um, control over that person to make sure that that happens a little bit quicker. Okay, so the team volume cycle bonuses, um, that's why you want to build your team because it creates residual income. Um, creating lasting income versus monthly commission. So like I said in the beginning, initially I was going for the commission because I thought it was better. Here's the thing. If you want this to replace your full-time income or you want this to be um, 
financial security for you and your family, you're going to have to hustle your butt off for the rest of your life to make it on commission alone. Um, because you're constantly going to have to be sharing and inviting new people and finding new people. And um, it, it's just not the easiest way to go about building your business and creating that residual income. So, um, and as I said before, it's the ability to help more people. So you have 10, you know, if you have 10 people helping people, you're going to touch more people's lives than it's just one, than if it's just one person. So I have this little, um, commission thing here on the bottom and you can see, um, on 525.11, this coach's, um, income was $30 for commission and a $20 fast start bonus. Um, exactly a year later, they have grown their team. Their retail commission is $182, but their team cycle bonuses is um, almost $1,300. And then they also have a matching bonus and then a fast start bonus. So for one week, this coach in one year um, increased their income to almost $1,600 in one week. Um, and then and exactly a year later from that date, um, the commission that this coach made was $32 but her team cycle bonuses was $3,400 with a matching bonus of $249. So that just represents, you know, the residual income and what you can really build from growing your team. This is another one um, that Kelly had posted in one of the groups. Um, this coach's first paycheck was 83 bucks. Um, the first time they got their check as an emerald, they had 42 bonus dollars basically from the team cycles and their check was almost $400. Um, their first paycheck as a diamond, their team cycle bonuses was $126 on top of um, $545 in commission. So like $680 for the week. Um, and then after one year of being a coach, their team cycle bonuses was $486. So it really gives you um, a good idea of, you know, the importance of building your team and inviting people. Okay, so let me stop the screen share. Hello. <laughs> Okay, I don't know why this is like this, but um, so do you guys have any questions? I'll open the line up um, and you can ask any questions you may have. <laughs> PJ just got home, so he has to put his face on the screen. <laughs> you guys can go ahead and unmute yourselves. There's a few of you that are still muted. Does that make sense? Does it, does it you know, did it help at all? What are your thoughts, questions, anything? No? I think, Corey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good refresher just to go back and touch on. I mean, I've been doing it for three months, and it's something that's nice to kind of go back and hit with your roots and find out you know, reassert the foundation of where you're building your team at. So, cause you'll get going and then you'll forget about something. So a couple of points you brought up that were really good as far as making lists, um, the follow-up list. Uh, initially when I started, I was just like a million miles a minute. I'm like, who am I going to touch? Who am I going to get? And then uh, as I went on, there were folks I was talking to and I totally forgot about. And I went the other day through my Facebook messaging and I was like, Jesus, I talked to these people like two months ago and totally forgot about it. Yeah. So I've got, you know, I make a, I got a million lists right now, and like I'm a post note freak, so we're doing the dash to diamond. So I've got like my coaching tree I'm trying to get. I've got follow ups that I've already talked to, potential coach prospects, people that are in the coaching five day preview. So <laughs> they're like everywhere. But yeah, it's it's awesome to go back and and rehack and kind of revisit points. I think it's good. Cool. Um, 
there was something I was going to say. Oh, um, something that um, I don't know if you caught it in the dash for Diamond, Josh, but Amy Ryleman, um, who is a multi-star Diamond, she actually goes through her um, Facebook message inbox mm -hmm. and will do, she'll start at the very bottom once a week, usually the end of the week, and she will do a mass follow-up with all those people. And then if those people are totally off board or she's already followed up with them and she has them written down or in her spread, she actually uses spreadsheets, but um, she has them in her spreadsheet when to follow up again. She archives all of them. So every week she's cleaning out her inbox, which I've started doing. And I think that that's going to help tremendously because you can go back and follow up a little bit easier without having 10,000 messages or whatever from these people from months ago I might mean, had some in there that were from a year ago that had nothing to do with beach body but it's it's just trying to organize and get rid of that clogging you know having messages in there that don't really need to be okay anybody else no all right well, I'll let you guys get back to your night. I really appreciate you jumping on the call. We had um, quite a few of you, so I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys um, are so inclined to um, shoot me a message and um, you know share the three points that you took away from tonight's call, I will select one of you and send you um, a prize. So, woohoo! Free goodies. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you have a great night, and thanks for jumping on the call. Thanks, Thanks for you too. Bye. Bye.